welcome to our virtual tatting series. Uh, we'll get started with looking at some of the stuff we have in our kits. So there sh should be some samples. We've also got some extra embroidery floss. I found embroidery floss worked really well for practicing and learning how to tat. Um, it's less complicated than the single strands and it seems to move pretty smoothly. You'll have two tatting shuttles. One will be filled and one will be empty. I'll show you how to fill them. There will be a beading needle um, and some beads. We won't need those until the third class. And then our second class, we'll be using this pin for our pickets. So you don't need that one yet. There's also a pattern in there and that pattern will make this. It's from a book called Modern Tatting, which is a very useful book. Um, I'll have a link in the description to that in our catalog. Uh, I checked it out from the library and I find the photos in it probably the best resource for tatting. So here's a couple different shuttles we have here. The differences with them are mainly the ends, and this is used for your pickets. This one's got more of a hook, kind of like a crochet hook. And then also, this one has a spool. You could also fill it with a sewing machine, like you do your regular bobbins. And then once it's full, you just pop it in. And then you'll pull it and it comes out. I find the sound that this makes really satisfying for tatting. And also this, these ones have really nice grips that help out. And the way this one is shaped is really useful for undoing stitches if you messed anything up. And then I have this one, which is, which would be good for bigger projects. Um, right now, it's filled with thread, and I actually went to make some out of it. And it's so tiny, and I couldn't get the pickets to go, because you're supposed to just use this end. So it actually, it's called the Tatsy, and it says Tatty Made Easy, but I don't think it actually is that helpful. Um, I think it would be best with a thicker thread. So to fill your tatting shuttle, you'll just take your thread that you're going to use and you can either just kind of put it on here and start wrapping it around or you can secure it a little more, put it through the hole in the center. And if you are struggling with it, you could use that beading needle that we have. And then I'm going to make a slip knot with it. Wrap that around. That two times. So it looks something like that. And then pull it tight. I'm going to start by wrapping that extra tail around a little bit. And then I'm just going to take my thread and wrap it around. And you just keep going until you have as much as you need on there. Um, patterns will tell you how many yards you need. Or if you're just practicing, just put a bunch on there. Um, in the books it said not to fill it beyond this point. I think that's just so that it isn't too bulky though I've overfilled some and I was still able to do tatting with it so I went ahead and just put the entire embroidery floss into my tatting shuttle just to use all of it so it did go over the edges but that is fine and you can fill it by doing this kind of rotating or you can just hold it and rotate it this way. I find rotating it around. Okay. 
so I'm not going to sit here and make you have to watch that whole thing. We'll just move on to the basics of tatting. So you might want to have some scissors on hand so that you can trim anything that doesn't work or to cut off your practice piece. Now we'll start with the way to hold it. I actually had two different ways of doing it. One was kind of more modified for the camera, but the correct way is you take your thumb and pointer finger, you're going to hold this, wrap around, and then you kind of stick that thread there in between your fingers. Now how I was kind of modifying it for the camera was doing it this way so that you can kind of see. So I was still doing the thumb and holding it, but then I had my fingers this way. So I'm going to take my thumb and pointer finger. We've got a little bit of a tail there. And I wrap around and do that a little more. So we have some thread to work with. And this is what your left hand looks like. Then with our right hand to do our double knot, we'll start off this way. And the double knot is the basic stitch of pretty much everything. Even the pickets are done pretty much this way. You'll wrap it around so that it's like that. Your shuttle will be here in between these fingers. And then you're going to take and put your shuttle underneath and then over and down through. Now the hard part of tatting is flipping your knot. So I'm going to loosen up this loop that I have here on my left hand and then pull and see there my knot changed. So now I'm going to tighten up with the left hand by moving my fingers here. And there's my knot. Um, I'm going to hold it then in between these two fingers just so it doesn't get away from me. And we'll do the other half of the knot, which I just take my shuttle and put it down through. We don't do that flourish this time. And we're going to flip this one as well. Loosen up a little, pull with that side, and see there it went. Now I can tighten it up. And to know whether or not you got your knot to flip correctly, it should slide. So you can tighten that loop, you can loosen that loop. And you'll want to be able to loosen your loop as you're working because you'll be using up that loop thread as you create knots. Also, when you're done, you pull the whole thing and it makes the ring. So it makes these rings that make up your tatting. So then to continue on, you're going to go back to wrapping around your hand like that. It's kind of like a flourish. You go under, over, and down through. And don't worry, I will go back to the beginning once again. So you want it to flip. There it flipped. And down, over, and through. Like that. So we've got two knots on here. So bringing that up close, you can see our two stitches we've done. These parts right here are the, each individual half of the knot. And then up top, you see kind of like a horizontal line. And that's how you know you've done a full stitch. And you can count your stitches by looking at those lines. So one, and then two. So showing this up close, I'm going to take and put this between these two fingers, wrap around the rest of the hand, stick that between the two fingers so we've created a loop here and you can do that with your dominant hand it doesn't really matter if you're left-handed right-handed both hands are going to be involved with this so you would just reverse everything um, then with my other hand I'm gonna wrap it around like that I've got my shuttle here in between these fingers and I'm gonna put it 
down under into the loop and then bring it over the loop through what we created on the other side. Now we can see flipping the knot. I'm going to loosen a little by letting these hands go. And it's starting to flip at this point and see there are not flipped. And then I'm going to just hold it here so it doesn't get away. I'm going to do the second half of my knot by going from this side down in and pull it through. And then I need to flip that knot again. There it's going. And there it goes. And I'm going to test it by sliding my loop and giving myself a little more room to work with. So then I'll keep working, do that little flourish, wrapping it around my hand like that, putting it through the loop from underneath, and then over, loosening a little on the loop, pulling with the shuttle side, there it flipped, and then I can tighten up here on the loop. And then the second half is done from this side into the loop and pull through. I'm going to flip that knot again. There it goes, it's flipped. And I want to tighten it. So there we have two on here. I've done that flourish again, going down through, over, we want our knot to flip, and there it goes. And down through, still slide my loop. And under, over through, and tighten. Now say yours doesn't flip, so like that didn't flip, I didn't loosen and on the left side, I can take this end here and pull it, open it back up. And you would also notice you can't pull your loop, it's very tight. Um, I'm going to loosen it back up. There we go. And now I can try again to flip it. And there it's going. And it's good. Now that was the first half of this. I'm going to go down through on this side, pull it through, and flip it. And it just takes a lot of practice of trying to flip your knot. It took me a while, and it's okay if you don't get it right away. It was pretty frustrating. That's why I gave us some time in between the classes so that you can practice doing the stitches. And once it clicks, it's actually quite fun to do tatting. I've done a couple. I can see how many I've done looking at those lines again. So I got one, two, three, four, five, six. 
Let's do eight into this one. Go through. There's seven. then eight. And if at any time you get ones that not and you just can't undo it, you can cut it off and start again. We're just practicing. But once you get the amount of stitches you want on your ring, you're going to pull your ring and keep pulling. And there we go. We got our own ring. You've completed a ring. Um, doing a project, you would continue working around doing multiple rings. You would probably also have pickets that you use to combine them. We'll talk about pickets in our next class. Um, just for now, I want you to practice flipping your knot and doing the double knot. Because once you get down that basic stitch, that's pretty much all you need to know to accomplish everything else. So here's the way I was showing it. It was kind of modified for camera, um, and maybe it was a little more challenging for everyone, but I kind of made parallel lines like this, and then tatting just like regular. I flourished around this other hand, flip the knot like before, grabbing it, and then going down into it this way. And I actually did most of my tensioning with my finger here, my pointer finger. So if that works better for you, you can also hold it that way. And then see it slides, so that's good. And then just keep working from there. If you end up having any questions, you can always contact me. Uh, my information will be in the description. And we can either meet in person or I can talk to you virtually. So good luck and have fun tatting.